So Blizzard invited me to an exclusive 10.1 review presentation for content creators and today I have a lot to share with you including what is the final dungeon pool for Mythic Plus for Season 2 of Dragonflight. We've been all discussing this and anticipating this and finally we have the answers. I can't wait to discuss it in this video. Aside from that, I will also talk about some of the exciting features coming in 10.07 and 10.1 and what to look forward to. And I'll get to that, but let me start with Season 2 of Dragonflight Mythic Plus because you all know how passionate I am about Mythic Plus and dungeons. All sections of my video are timestamped in case you're looking for something specific. Before we dive in, a reminder if you like my content and do subscribe to the channel that will help me out immensely. So Dragonflight Season 2 Mythic Plus. And this has been a recurring topic on my streams. What are some of the dungeons you want to see in Dragonflight Season 2? What are some of the dungeons we don't want to see? And you know what? I'm glad to say I think Blizzard made the right choice for their dungeon pool in Season 2. You know, we were just joking the other day, the perfect storm, the worst case scenario is Blizzard picking something like Siege of Boralis, King's Rest, Shrine of the Storm, Sanguine Depths. And if you see the list in a bit, I think it's fair to say Blizzard steered clear of all the unpopular dungeons from previous expansions. And the massive W is they actually brought back fan favorites. And by the way, I think it's smart that Blizzard dictated what dungeons should come back for Dragonflight Season 2. Remember the last time in Shadowlands, they let the fans vote for what Mythic Plus dungeons they want? Yup, that's how you folks got Grim Rail Depot. So for the eight dungeons and Dragonflight, Dragonflight Season 2. It will comprise four new dungeons from the Dragonflight pool of dungeons and four old returning dungeons from previous expansions. And the four Dragonflight dungeons that are rotating into Season 2 Mythic Plus shouldn't surprise you, but they are namely Udama Legacy of Tia, Naltheris, Brackenheight Hollow, and the Halls of Infusion. While the returning Season 2 Mythic Plus dungeons include the wildly popular fan favorite and what I always wanted, Freehold from Battle for Azeroth. Alongside that from Battle for Azeroth, Underrot is also returning. We will also have Vortex Pinnacle from Cataclysm. Yes, it goes back all the way to Kata. And last but not least, Naltheran Slayer from Legion. And let me break it down for you, shall we? Let's talk about all eight coming dungeons. Starting with the brand new DF dungeons that is rotating into Season 2. And let's get the elephant out of the room. Brackenheight Hollow. I know this name of the dungeon actually strikes fear into a lot of people. Actually, frankly, I'm a bit nervous about it too. Remember at the start of the dungeon where we did it on Mythic Zeros? If you do not have a disease dispel, you are in for trouble because you know how fast the diseases actually stack up within the dungeon itself. And not only that, this dungeon, especially in the first half, has very, very high mob density. There are mobs that will AOE fear the group if you don't interrupt them. There are patrols that are always moving up and down. So the chance for a pug to accidentally butt pull some of these mobs is actually really high. And if I were to guess, this will be people's least favorite dungeon. The most important thing naturally is Blizzard probably needs to pay attention to the fine tuning of this dungeon, especially on how the diseases start scaling on the very high keys. And I don't think they want to end up in a scenario where having a disease cleanse is an absolute must have for this dungeon. But if Blizzard does nail the fine tuning in terms of the difficulty for this dungeon when it's implemented into Mythic Plus, I think this dungeon could be fun because you can do massive, massive giga AoE pulls, especially in the first half of the dungeon. You know, the part where you need to free those dudes from the cages? Yup. That's where you do those big pulls. The second new Dragonflight dungeon coming from Mythic Plus is the Halls of Infusion, and similar to Brackenheight Hollow, but to a lesser intensity and degree, there's a bit of concerns around Halls of Infusion. Why? You might have already guessed it. A lot of you will remember before the final boss of the Halls of Infusion, there is actually a gauntlet that you need to pass through. And in this gauntlet, there's some oncoming waves that you need to dodge. There's some dragon frontals that you need to dodge. And there's a mini boss like AoE circle that you need to dodge. Can you imagine on a very high key, these all actually one shots. And I feel like that might be extremely punishing to the point where it might be frustrating to the player base because if your tank doesn't know what he's doing, he positions the dragon's frontal in a way where there's no safe spot to dodge the waves and the dragon, then the party is screwed. Having a tough gauntlet definitely brings up memories of that tough gauntlet in Sanguine Depths at very high keys, right? The breaker of keys. And you know, Halls of Infusion has the potential to be that kind of dungeon where the entire dungeon is smooth, you did everything right until the very final gauntlet before the boss where you actually break the key. And that doesn't feel good because your invested time doesn't have a payoff. The other thing I noticed when we were doing Mythic Zeros on Halls of Infusion at the launch was that sometimes if you die on bosses, the walk back is extremely far. So graveyard checkpoints probably needs to be reviewed for Mythic Plus. 
But similar feedback, I think if they fine tune the gauntlet and maybe look into graveyard spawn points, also infusion is actually really, really manageable. And yes, I know there's some cheeses where you can do the gauntlet in the easy mode, but I think Blizzard actually fixed that. But don't you worry, I'm looking out for more tech when it comes to the gauntlet for Halls of Infusion. So the M plus tips will still come to this channel. Stay tuned for that. The third dungeon for Dragonflight, Udama Legacy of Tia, which I suspect out of the four is actually my favorite Dragonflight dungeon to come to season two. I think the bosses are generally fun and it's varied. That's the most important thing. You have a boss that is a three target cleave. You have a single target boss and you have a boss that has a multi-target spread cleave on the totem boss. So I like the variation in the bosses and that is also mirrored in the environment design. You know, there's dimly lit, very tight corners with packed mobs. And then there's like sparse, open, brightly lit boss arenas. Overall, I think this is a dungeon that people for Dragonflight would like the most in Season 2. The last of the four Dragonflight dungeons to come to Mythic Plus is Nelthurus. And you might ask, wait, why isn't this your favorite dungeon? And I don't think it has anything to do with the fight designs, but it's really more a personal preference on color palettes. I prefer Udaman over Nelthurus because Nelthurus has this kind of very bright, orangey, reddish kind of color palette throughout the entire dungeon. And it's consistent throughout the entire dungeon. And if there's anything I learned in Wild Mythic Plus, contrast in colors and the way you set up your display can help you focus better and read mechanics better. So make sure you're very sharp when you're entering a key like that, I guess. And now moving on to the four returning dungeon, I think this is the favorite part of this video. I absolutely adore talking about this. I've said this many times on stream. I hope they bring back this dungeon and they finally have Freehold from Battle for Azeroth. The best ever Battle for Azeroth dungeon is back for good in season two. And holy hell, I cannot be any happier. Freehold was like, everyone's favorite key in Battle for Azeroth. Maybe you can say when Junkyard was released, that was kind of a hot favorite as well. But why is it everyone's favorite? Many reasons. Firstly, I think it's the aesthetics of the entire dungeon. There's just something unique about the design and art style of Freehold. You know, how they incorporated the pirate-driven theme of the dungeon, pirate ships, drunken brawlers, you get it. It's a very different contrast versus the typical high fantasy setting of Blizzard's dungeons. Second reason, you can do massive, massive pulls within Freehold. There are a lot of humanoid mobs that don't really do that much in Freehold. Arguably, the bosses are a bit more dangerous. You know, and there's a lot of places for this. At the start of the dungeon, you know, when the patrol moves down the stairs, you can do a, like a big triple pull at that part. Near the second boss's area of the three captains, you can also do a massive pull near the houses with the humanoids. Near the ring where you do the third boss, there's a lot of humanoid mobs as well. And speaking about big pulls, there's also a lot of cheese when it comes to the big pulls, using the painful motivation cards to one-shot mobs. Lots of tech when it comes to big pulls here. And we'll be sure to talk about it in the upcoming masterclasses for Season 2. So many good memories in Freehold from Battle for Azeroth. This is what I'm anticipating the most from the patch. Alright, moving on. Another BFA dungeon, Underrod. Now, if I was Blizzard, I would have picked Atal Dazar instead of Underrod. Because I have a big bias for Giga snapping technology that I think a lot of people enjoyed as well. But that's not to say that Underrod is not a good dungeon. I think most people would prefer Underrod over Siege of Borales and King's Rest. Anyway, the packs around the second boss, Crackmaw, is always a delight to kind of chain pulls, right? It's a high intensity kind of dungeon where you need to squeeze efficiency in terms of time. You chain pull after pull, especially after the skitters die. But there's also a compensating level of difficulty here because there's a high mob density, especially in the second boss area where people might butt pull stuff by accident. And if you accidentally pull the wrong mob, then you're in for trouble. Speaking about butt pulling mobs, I think the worms at the end of the dungeon are also very risky. You traditionally can't see them, they're buried underground. There's like a cloudish effect you see on the ground that tells you that they're there, but sometimes pucks actually miss it. And that's how the key can go very wrong. I think the last boss has the potential to be an absolute shit show. Learning how to deal with the spores is really, really important. And obviously there's a lot of cheese techniques to basically make sure like the spores are done very neatly. We'll cover that in the videos. But all in all, given that Blizzard avoided Shrine of the Storm, they avoided King's Rest, they avoided Siege of Borales from BFA, I'm a happy camper. But Blizzard, if you're listening, Season 3 bring back Atal Daza. Trust me, Atal Daza will be well received. Moving on to the third returning dungeon, Naltharian's Lair from Legion. And when I talk about the 10.1 rate later on, you will know why this makes sense. Because from a lore perspective, it actually fits the theme of what we're going to do in 10.1. And in case you haven't learned, patch 10.1's title is the Embers of Naltharian. So what's more apt for Mythic Plus is a dungeon called Naltharian's Lair, I guess. Now, since the Legion days when this dungeon was released, I've always adored the setting in the dungeon. You know, I like how it starts with a massive water slide that you need to take and you need to jump into. 
And then you have this gigantuous underground cavern system with all these like stunning rock formations, all these winding water streams, and all these strange ruins. And we will go into the mechanics and the specifics of the fight for the Season 2 Masterclasses. But thematically, I thought this was a good choice given how the lore is set up for 10.1. And hold your horses on that, I'll cover that in the later part of this video. The final returning old dungeon for Season 2 of Dragonflight is Vortex Pinnacle. And my word, I think this is the most beautiful dungeon in the entire pool for Season 2. Now naturally, I think I still like Freehold more overall because of just how the dungeon is set up for big pools. But visually, I think Vortex Pinnacle really gives Freehold a run for its money. If you didn't play Cataclysm, Vortex Pinnacle is basically set in a palace that is high above the clouds. And there's like gorgeous views of the different surrounding platforms in the sky. And even the mobs are themed after air elementals. And that's also mirrored in the boss designs as well. But by far the most exciting thing about Vortex Pinnacle, I guess is for the community, us, in terms of figuring out new tech. Because when Cataclysm launched back then, there wasn't a very big dungeon running scene. It isn't as big as Mythic Plus these days. And so I can bet with you there's a lot of strats that are not uncovered yet. And from a guide maker standpoint, I'm very interested to figure out all the little tech in this dungeon. And that basically completes the set of 8 for Dragonflight Season 2 and Mythic Plus. Overall, the highlight for me is the returning dungeons for Season 2. And as for the new dungeons for Dragonflight, like Brackenheight Hollow and Halls of Infusion, I feel like as long as Blizzard pays attention to tuning of those dungeons, similar to how they did Season 1, you know, like Ruby Life Pools, they tuned it very quickly within the first 3 weeks, they nerfed the mobs, they nerfed the bosses. They need to pay the same level of attention or detail to those dungeons. And I think as long as they do that, once we get past that thieving process in the first few weeks, Season 2 should set up to be a very, very fun season. Now, naturally, I'm very eager to hear your thoughts as well. Those are basically my personal opinion. Is there any dungeon that you wanted Blizzard to bring back? I know some of us debated on the live stream whether they should bring back stuff like Dead Mines into Mythic Plus. And while I think it's a very cool idea, I'm not too sure how possible it is to bring like very dated content into Mythic Plus. I guess it's possible, right? They are doing Cataclysm and Warlords of Draenor dungeons. Maybe they can do some of these classic dungeons as well. If you find this an interesting topic point, I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe we'll do a dedicated video on what are some of the possible dungeons they can bring back into Mythic Plus from a fan favorite perspective. A story for another time because now I would like to talk about more exciting stuff that is coming in the Horizon patch 10.1. So naturally, although the presentation I was invited to sit in for is for 10.1 specifically, they did mention some stuff about 10.07. So 10.07 will actually launch on 22nd of March. So yes, we are just like a couple of weeks away from it. So mark your calendars, 22nd March 10.07. Now, the big one, 10.1. There's quite a few things to talk about. So as I talk about that, let me flash through some of the assets that Blizzard was sharing in terms of screenshots. That will probably give you a very good flavor of what to expect for 10.1. Now, the brand new zone we are getting in 10.1 is called the Zaralek Caven. And as you can see from the imagery in this video, there are actually very distinct parts of the zone. There's like a region that is more like crystalline formation. There's a region that is more like lava themed, each with their own biomes and new looking mobs. And during the briefing, we are actually told that the zone is quite large. It's actually larger than what we had for Zara of Mortis. And the big win here, the big win that they learned from the launch of Shadowlands, and I guess the success of Dragonflight's launch, is their enabling dragon riding in this brand new zone. And I think it's a massive W. No more walking around in the mall like in Shadowlands. It seems like they took the feedback to heart and that's really important to me. And I hope Blizzard never strays from this philosophy because it was liberating to fly that early in an expansion. Not to forget, with every major patch, we get a brand new raid as well. And 10.1's raid is called Aberus the Shadowed Crucible. So essentially, what's the lore behind this new raid? Well, in 10.07, as part of the new Forbidden Reach experience, we will learn that the fallen Earth Warden Naltharion, infamously known as Deathwing, kept a secret laboratory deep underground below the Dragon Islands. And both the newly freed incarnates and the rebel band of Draktir, led by Scale Commander Sakareth, poses a threat as they fight to gain access to the lab and control over Naltharion's long hidden secrets. So Abras is the name of the secret laboratory that is hidden within the Zaralak Cavens, which is essentially the new zone. And this is where Naltharion not only created the Draktheus, but it's also where it succumbed to the whispers of the old gods. There are nine bosses in this raid, and it does sound like Scale Commander Sakareth is actually one of those bosses. Now, I don't know whether he's the last boss, but hits up just like Season 1 of Dragonflight, normal, heroic, and mythic raids were all launched simultaneously. And you know what? 10.1 actually lands really, really soon on the PTR. In fact, it launches on 11 March, so literally when this video goes live, it's just a couple days. 
And 10.1 from what we hear from the presentation will also come with some quality of life changes. But the most interesting one that I heard is that they're looking to test cross-faction guilds soon. And that to me is very exciting because to me, cross-faction content was actually what allowed Mythic Plus to flourish. Any time of the day, any time zone, I'm able to find more players because I now have access to both Alliance and Horde. And now you're telling me I can run any form of ratio for Mythic Plus while staying in my guild because, well, a tank needs dwarf form. It's really OP. So I can be a dwarf and I can be in a Horde guild and that's absolutely great. Now, I heard that they are looking to test this. They didn't say when it will be available, but that to me is really, really exciting. And so that's what we expect from Blizzard for 10.1. But what can you expect from me for 10.1? Well, firstly, the Masterclass Mythic Plus Dungeon Guides will come out way earlier for Season 2. I was off to a slow start in Season 1, but rest assured, it'll be more timely this time around. There's more one-minute Mythic Plus tips, tricks coming your way for Season 2. Can't wait to uncover those new tech. And a lot of people have been asking me this as well, and I'll say yes, every single spec class will have its own weak aura and user interface release on my website, entirely free for every single spec, including healers, DPS, tanks going forward. Expect me to release these profiles before season two. So you can start the brand new season with a brand new UI if you play DPS and healer, and you have not really been able to enjoy my tank profiles. That said, the other thing I'll put an extra emphasis on for 10.1 is to be playing more classes and specs. It's quite clear a lot of you got a kick out of watching me play all the different tank specs. And so I will maintain all six tank specs for 10.1, which will pave the way for some Giga Vault opening videos weekly on this channel. But I guess what I'm trying to say is expect a lot more content from me in 10.1 versus 10.0. And a shout out to Blizzard for including me in their presentation for 10.1. And if you like the content in this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Rest assured, more Dragonflight content is coming your way. You don't want to miss them. Let's climb the Mythic Plus ladder together. Thanks for watching. Good luck in your keystones. I will see you soon.